uh, this month's installment of read all the tarot books on your shelf instead of just letting them sit there is Power Tarot by Trish McGregor and Phyllis Vega. I've talked about this on the channel before because I got it for the spreads. There are over 100 spreads in the back. Uh, they go from very simple spreads, a single card, all the way up to really big spreads. They have like a double horoscope spread that's 24 cards, horizon spread, bridge, all this stuff. So really, really cool, but it's not just a book of spreads. It's got stuff about learning the tarot in it. So I wanted to go through and read the rest of the content, um, and I did that this month. And, you know, it's not bad. It's actually a pretty decent tarot book. Um, there is no tarot history in here, which the authors are like, if you want that, that's not this book. We're here to teach you how to read tarot in a very practical way. So I appreciate that because there was no bad and there's no wrong information because then no fact checking needed. It was very cool to be able to skip all that. Interestingly, they spent a lot of time on things like timing in tarot. Um, and they talked a bit about how, how they see tarot working, um, which is a bit, a bit of a mishmash of different theories, but they do mention Carl Jung's introduction to the I Ching, which if you haven't read that, I recommend it to anybody who uses any kind of divination system. So whether you use, you know, a pendulum or dice or the I Ching or tarot cards or other cardomancy or whatever, it's a really cool thing about synchronicity and, and just the connection between seemingly unrelated things, events or topics um, that you'll see connections to. Um, and that's kind of how one of the ways that they see tarot working and one of the ways that I see tarot working too. Um, so I thought it was cool that they mentioned that because I mentioned that to people who are like, what is tarot? Or I'm new to tarot. Um, I always mention like, go read the Carl Jung's introduction to the I Ching. The, the front part of the book kind of talks about the structure of tarot and then some troubleshooting stuff like what if a reading doesn't make sense and things like that whether whether or not you need to do anything ritualistic with your tarot deck basically they give some suggestions but then they're like eh, do whatever you want um so i like that they give you enough if you're new and you're kind of looking for suggestions on how to work with tarot that's in here but they're not prescriptive then when they get into the meanings of the card so to speak um, they do talk about, you know, read through our stuff, read through the guidebook that came with your deck, work with any deck you want, and then try to come up with your own meanings through experience. Not just through thinking about it, but just do readings until you feel comfortable. Read in multiples of cards. Don't, you know, a single card draw can be good for sort of getting, getting a grasp on the deck as a whole, but really you're not going to be proficient until you can read multiple cards together in some kind of a narrative or connected way. And so they give you little exercises to do, to work on that. And then when they get into the cards themselves, they give you kind of an overview of what the card can relate to, what it typically shows and that kind of thing. And then they give you in a reading generally, in a work reading, in a romance reading, in a finances reading, in a health reading, and in a spirituality reading. So what I like about that is that it, if you were a beginner and you were picking up this book, it would immediately get you thinking about context, the context of the question, the context of the query, the context of the person. Like, what is the person you're reading for bringing into the reading? And how does that influence what your answers are going to be? And then they talk about how the cards talk to each other in a reading and, you know, how they relate to each other. So I like that as, as introductory material right off the bat. I think all readers should kind of be exposed to these concepts early on. Otherwise, people get it really locked into memorizing and regurgitating. And that makes for terrible, terrible readings. So yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this book a lot. You know, they did kind of start down the road with the AE weight thing of like equating significators with court cards based on people's physical appearance or attributes, but they're like, but that doesn't really work and gender's complicated and blah. Um, and this was written in the late nineties. So, you know, I think for its time period, it was, it was trying to do the best it could to not be prescriptive or racist or sexist or, or gender stereotyping in those ways. You know, they're kind of like, well, you know, historically people have done this, but 
it kind of breaks down. So just pick whichever significator you want. I, d I didn't find it like very pro problematic at all. And I thought that some of their descriptions of the cards were interesting. Um, again, this is another one where you can read through it, and even if you disagree with 90% of it, there might be 10% where you're like, oh, I hadn't thought of that, or, oh, I really like that interpretation of the card, you know, in some contexts. Um, and I just saw something else. Oh, the other thing that they do is at the beginning of the pips um, section, they walk through the elemental associations as most people read them. And then they do a separate thing on numerology. And while their numerology doesn't quite line up with the way that I like to read the numerology aspect, it is based on Pythagorean numerology, which is my preferred. Um, so again, it was something I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, I, I like the way they've laid this out. And they do try to draw patterns from the 1 through 10, even though they also talk about the kind of traditional tarot imagery of like, the Eight of Cups means walking away, or the Nine of Cups means satisfaction, or something like that. They do try to kind of make a pattern there for the 1 through 10, which, I, again, I think is helpful for beginners, because otherwise you're trying to memorize 78 individual pieces of information instead of, like, 22 pieces of information, and then the 1 through 10 of that gets repeated again. Um, it's just an easier system if it if it repeats and if you can kind of remember some common factors between like the magician and then all the aces and the high priestess and all the twos you know if it's if it's got a two on it it kind of means one set of things and if it's got a five on it it means another kind of set of things you know if you follow me yep i like that what else did i like about this book i don't know that might have been about it but i do also like that the the spreads are very specific and so you know, if you're stuck on a question or you're not sure what to ask, you can look in the back and find ongoing, you know, they have several different relationship spreads. Like, okay, what if you're in an ongoing relationship? You're not looking for a new one. You want to read on a relationship you've been in and hope will continue. I like this book. Um, it is out of print, unfortunately, but you can get it online and it's not, you know, very well bound and stuff. I'm sure the pages are going to eventually want to fall, fall apart, but it's got some good information in it. And who knows? Um, oh, one of the funny things I, I laughed at in the beginning is it's like, uh, and then again, this is late 90s, Tara's more popular than ever. There's more than 300 decks on the market right now. You know, and it's like, okay, now there's what, 4,000 or something? <laughs> like, you have no idea. Um, anyway, Power Tarot by Trish McGregor and Phyllis Vega. Check it out if you are inclined. 